what is everybody is back arena kit and today we're back with another doki doki video but now we're on natsuki's mod the mod all about natsuki doki doki exit music now if you want to download this mod for yourself it'll be the second link in the description and if you didn't watch yesterday's video it was kind of a weird one it was um say he always shoots up the ddlc y yeah you heard me correctly there'll be a little icon the little card icon at the top right hand side of the screen if you want to go watch that Let's get straight into this. Basically, whenever I start a new game and I press enter, my key button stops my recording. So I name my character now, quit the game, come back. So we're here. So Monday. We are named idiots like we usually are. Or backer, but idiot. What I say. It's the day of the festival. Oh, okay, so it starts on the day of the festival. All of the days I expect this to be one way walking with Sayori. Hey, Sayori is an answer on a phone. Instead of going to a house to wake her up, it's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That all she needs and that all she needs and what I want to give her. The hell with it! I'm going to get her. I grab cu cupcakes and that. I'll grab a cupcakes and that. ski and I made yesterday. I made my way to say always house. So I'm stuttering because. Please don't have Sayori already be killed off. Please don't. I wish Sayori has to knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I end up doing this after all. Waking up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. Oh no, please don't. I really don't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say, ri idiot. Say who stands in front of a bed with a long rope in her hand. It's tied to a hangman's noose. In the shock of a moment, I release the grip of the cupcakes. What the? It, it's not what it. Like head is not what it looks like. I, I'm sorry, idiot. I can't believe this. So you wouldn't do something like this? Jesus, Sayori. I should have known it was this this bad. Sayori drops the noose to the floor. Sayori, why haven't you talked to anyone about this? I, I don't want to waste people's time. You're not wasting anybody's time. We all just want to ha want you to be happy like you've made us. You you really deserve to be happy. I know you don't think that now, but well, it's the truth. And I'm determined to help you in every step of the way. But at the start, you need to talk about this. I... I can't. I just... There's a short pause. All is silent, aside from say all he's sobbing. I... I was about to do it, idiot. I've never seen... I'd have never seen you again. Sayori, could you imagine if I found you like that? I... 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 Sayori, listen, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You'll always have a reason to stay with us. If there's only one thing worth living for you, then you need to hold on to that. Now, I know there is. You told me yourself yesterday, idiot. She releases a grip on me and backs away. We know it'll be tough, but I'll be there for you. We all will, no matter what. Idiot, don't. Now listen to me, you need to talk to someone professional about this. I'm not taking no for an answer. I don't think I, I'm ready. We, we can go another time. No, not a chance. You seriously need professional help as soon as possible. We're leaving now. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can. Sayori, do it. For me? If not for yourself. She sniff she sniffles, wiping her face with her sleeve. Oh, okay. Come on, let's go. To the doctors. You'll take the bus. Idiot. The festival. Screw the festival. You're more important to me than that. Well, well I, I need to get changed first. Oh. oh of course. I nod and take it outside the door, reaching down to pick up the rope first. Take it with me just in case. She gently nods, shutting the door in my face. Blimey already. Jeez, only four minutes in. No anxious leaving her alone right now, something like this. Regardless, she needs the privacy. And the old dam began to clean up the cupcake massacre littered on the floor with a towel. Nazi's gonna kill me. I return downstairs and untie the noose, dropping the low swoop into the trash. I linger downstairs for a minute or two before heading back upstairs. She's probably ready by now. I knock on Sayori's door and she answers. Ready? So he nods once, her eyes glued to the floor. But this is what's best for me, right? She stares at me, expecting for an answer. I feel uneasy about answer anyway. I know it is. Come on now, let's get going. Whew. 
Hey, custom artwork already. I'm sitting down in the waiting room outside the doctor's office, patiently waiting for Sayori, Sayori to return. I'm anxious. My phone buzzes quietly. Remember that today was supposed to be a day for festival? Text is from Monica. Oh no. Is she evil in this mod? Where are you? I have to reply. I'm busy. Really, idiot? Please don't tell me you got a cold feel about the poems or something. It's a bit more serious than that. What's going on? I don't know if I can tell you right now. But it's serious, okay? You gotta believe me. Fine. Just hurry up and bring Sayori with you. Look out the door. Through a small window, I can see Sayori breaking down in the chair, her head rests on the doctor's desk. I feel terrible. No one I let her reach such a point due to my own word behind me. The door that leads through the entrance by the door swings open and a couple of nurses walk by. My phone buzzes again in my hand, I turn the attention back to it. It's just me or is Yuzi It's just me and Yuri here, damn it. Wait, where's Natsuki? I don't know. Please get here quick and bring Sayori, okay? It's a personal issue, I can't promise anything, but I'll try to get the festival before it's over, okay? Okay. Go to Miss Idle Waiting. Uh, uh, minutes of idle waiting pass before I get another message from her. Forget it, everyone, everyone's already here and they're waiting. We have to cancel. I turn my phone to a pocket, run my hands through my hair. Why now? I feel terrible for Sayori. Sayori. The fact that she's in such pain right now and how oblivious I was to all of it. But on the other hand, I also feel like I've put Monica and Yuri in the spot in front of all her classmates. Monica and Yuri. That reminds me of something, what Monica told me. Where's Natsuki? Suddenly the door to the waiting room opens again and other nurse walks by Heather. She's accompanied by somebody familiar. What the n- Natsuki, what the hell? She's got a nosebleed, she's got a black eye. Bloody hell. Natsuki, are you uh, okay? She quickly turns and runs back where she came, except in the hospital in tears. I jump in my seat to speak to her, but I notice the nurse stared at me suspiciously. I take a seat once more, anxious now at Natsuki's well-being as one of Sayori's. Uh, excuse me. What happened to her? She explains that Natsuki wandered into a hospital, bloody and bruised, looking for help. Poor Natsuki. She then cautiously asked me if I had anything to do with Natsuki's injuries. Christ, no. I don't even know what's going on. I had to big my friend is. She tried to stop myself. I doubt Sayori would want me to talk to our struggle so openly. Not now, anyway. Well, listen, it's serious, okay? I bite my lip as the nurse continues on her way. My phone buzzes again. Are you sure you don't know where Sayori and Natsuki are? I already told you, I don't know. I can't tell about Natsuki either. Chances are it's her own personal issue and she'd deal with it in her own way. Still, maybe I should text her. It doesn't matter anyway. We had to cancel our performance. People are complaining about the cupcakes not being here. Yuri's going for some fresh air. Jesus, I'm sorry, okay? My hands are tied here. I can't do anything to help right now. Okay, whatever. Oh, she's going to hit me with that K. She's hit me with that K. Oh, she's, she's not happy. Thanks a lot, idiot. Now I've pissed Monica off because I couldn't bring myself to tell her what happened. So I had to text Natsuki quick about what I just saw. Could have missed pass with no response. The message doesn't even know if Mark has read. Office doors swing open and Sayori emerges. Idiot, are you okay? Not really, I'm just stressed out. How are you? I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure? Because I'm here for you, I can just... Idiot, please. Can we just drop this? I just don't want to make a big deal out of it, especially in front of the other club members. I'll stand up. Say, so, I don't think you understand how big of a deal this really is. You nearly... You nearly killed yourself. We should go home and rest for a couple days, okay? I guess I'll have to, right? <laughs> so he lets out a small bout of almost nervous laughter. It's a good idea, at least. You know that. But what about the festival? I hesitate. I don't want to say to feel like it's her fault that the performance was cancelled. So I decided if Natsuki's absent. Well, Natsuki didn't actually show up either. Monica had to cancel the performance, unfortunately. You... You didn't... Tell her, did you? Uh, about oh man, about I didn't. Unless you want to talk to her about yourself, she won't know. Okay? Sayori nods. I think I'll tell her. She so she knows why why your plans for the festival were ruined. I can tell what she's going to say. It wasn't your fault, Sayori. None of this is. So he grabs my hand tightly and crushing it with a vice like grip. You you can talk to her if you really want to. Hell she'd probably be able to give better advice than me. Maybe. Did you tell my parents? I, I did, yeah. I'm sorry though, I felt like I had to and Thanks. I was scared I'd have to tell him myself. So he glances downwards to a prist pristine floor. I love you, idiot. I, Despite her condition, I can't lie to her. It wouldn't be unfair to have her end our hopes and sucked like that. Keep my mouth shut. A minute or so passes. Anyway, we should get going. There's no point going to school now. Wait, what time is it? 
It's about midday. We missed the festival and we turn up now and Morgan's just going to get mad at us. Come on, I'll take you home. We can do about some more there. She gently nods following my lead. We exit the hospital and ride a bus back to her house. Already jam-packed with 10 minutes into the mod. I decided to stay with Sayori in her house just to make sure she's feeling better. We have at least a few hours together but we spend that time talking and watching shows together. The mother arrives first, thanking me for letting her know what happened. I tell her that it's no problem. She tells us Sayori's father's on his way and I'm free to leave if I want to. After, I'm sure she's safe, I'll leave her with her mother and head home. End in the kitchen, I flick the line and start to make myself a sandwich, cut another tomato. But I started wondering about Natsuki. Remember the time I spent with her? A little scuffle over cupcakes I sent? That bruise, the nosebleed. What the hell happened to her? And who in the right mind would do that to her? Possible reason for her injuries being to circulate in my head. Maybe she just fell over. She could run under fire with another classmate of ours? Or maybe, no. Surely not. Maybe I'm just overreacting to the situation. It's been a rough day after all. Okay, I think I know why she has that bruise as well. I have played a brand new day, and the normal backstory to Natsuki's problem in the original game as well is that her dad beats her. So I think that's what's happened here. Natsuki's dad beat her, and she managed to escape, and she went to hospital to get help. Then obviously she saw us there, probably felt extremely embarrassed, and just left. And, just, it's probably, and she probably is going to pretend that it never happened. But something she told me while we were reading manga together sticks in my head. I don't even know what my dad would fi my dad would do if he found this. Yeah, miles were always the thing what made people think about her dad beats him, her. Did I just say him? Really? Come on, Natsuki's best girl. How could you call Natsuki him? I should have thought. It's the only real reason I can cover it for Natsuki's terrible injuries. Also, as well, I was distracted. I accidentally cut my finger open while slicing tomato. Ah, I got my finger in a paper towel, let a few drops of blood soak into it. Throwing the paper towel in the trash, I think back to Natsuki. So I vow to ask her about her father next time I see her. Even if she assures me that I'm wrong, I'll at least don't know. I'll eat my sandwich and head upstairs to my room. Okay. I collapse on my bed exhausted from the stress that the day had brought me. I drift into unconsciousness within minutes. Wednesday. Okay, so we've skipped Tuesday. We were on Monday, we skipped Tuesday, now we're on Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh hi, idiot. Back of the literature club. Crane in my neck, I look around the club room. It's empty. You and I are the only people here. I leave the classroom door open, expecting the other members to arrive shortly. Hey, Yuri. I sit down at the desk next to her and pack my stationery kit as she did with her own. Listen, I know that Monica cancelled the club yesterday, so I didn't, didn't get a chance to talk to you. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry that she had our little, uh, let our little presentations go. D don't worry about it, idiot. Monica told me that it wasn't your fault you couldn't come. She said it was only something. She said it was something serious. Yeah, but it was a bit of an emergency. So I had to play down the situation in case Yuri doesn't know the full story. I don't want to worry her after all. Are you alright? Me, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. It was someone else. Someone close. I see. Well, I hope everything works out well for you and your friend. I just knocked my microphone. Sorry, guys. I hope so too, Yuri. A moment passes, a complete silence. Yuri sat down at a desk still reading. Class is still empty aside from us. So, uh, Yuri? Yuri jumps out of a chair and he'll start by the interrupting silence. Y yes You haven't seen Monica today, have you? Uh, I'm afraid not, idiot. She's been in a mood since the festival, unfortunately. Not, not that I mean to be so rude about it. I did mean a lot to her, after all. I know it did. That's why I wanted to speak to her. If I explain why Sayori and I were absent, then she might forgive me. Well, the both of us. But I promised Sayori I wouldn't say anything to Monica. Has she... Has Monica said anything about me since the festival? N not really. I mean, she did complain about the three of you were gone. I was kind of thankful that we got c to cancel. Not to ruin Monica's plans, though. I I'd never do such a thing intentionally. I know you wouldn't, Yuri. Don't worry. I can tell you're a good person to be so mean. Wait, what? I can tell you're too good of a person. Of a per Too good a person. Okay. That's how I said that, sorry, I'm so stupid. Right. You only faltered for a moment and lost for words. Not, not at all. It's just that. I don't even know if she, I should be telling you this. When I heard Monica talking about you and say you're to one of her friends, I, I wasn't eavesdropping though. What did she say? I heard her mention that the only good reason to cancel on the festival was if somebody died. Okay, that's. That's a bit harsh, don't you think? So does she know? What? Monica wouldn't say something like that, right? She's a sweetheart. Besides, not only is it egocentric, 
It's insensitive. Even if she did know about Sayori, it feels like it was too close to reality. Well, oh, that's harsh. I doubt she meant it though. What I mean to say is she was in no position to say that. I understand that she was frustrated about it, but there's never a good reason to say such whole things about that's going to be Monica at the door. We used to get caught in the throat when she retreats to the confines of a book. Turns to see Monica standing in the doorway giving you an intense glare. I knew Monica would be looking. She doesn't dare to meet Monica's gaze. Instead concentrating on the portrait of Markov, she's back to her book. Wish I could do the same. I swallow. She huffs and starts talking. Where say you are, Natsuki? She stares at Yuri intently. Monica present intimidates me. I, I don't know Monica. I haven't seen them. She gives an ascetic stare, her emerald eyes piercing my confident facade. Facade. Did Sayori really tell her about the hospital? Are you sure? Y I... yeah. Alright then, how come you went to a festival, idiot? I had a family emergency. At this point I'm practically lying to her face to keep Sayori's really secret safe until she finds comfortable confiding in Monica. Then again, we don't Sayori for a long time. She's pretty much a part of, a chosen, of my chosen family at this point anyway. She's like a sister to me. So it's more stretching the truth than it is lying to her. Well, that's why I tell myself anyway. <laughs> right. Monica's not having any of this. Even if she doesn't know what actually is going on, she might know I'm lying to her. But for say, you sake, I have to keep face. I have to keep face for her. Wait. For say, I'll have to keep face for her. Can't betray her trust if she finds out I've told something about private information. Monica Demir suddenly changes, and she looks at the two of us with a very wry smile on her face. Okay, you two. Since we're only ones here, I've decided we're going to have a council today's meeting. I don't know any of your emergency or absences tomorrow. The emphasis on those words worry me. Do you know how aggressively she spoke of them? That's all. You can leave now. Yui looks up from her book guilty and packs up, suddenly dropping the portrait of Mark from the station kit into a bag. She scurries over the classroom without a word. Monica turns her attention to me, expecting me to pack up. I nod and pick up my bag, exiting the hallway without another word. Yeah, it's going to be so awkward. <laughs> Walking through the school's dormant hallways, I I reach the door to the courtyard, but stop. Place my hand, head on my 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 head in my palm. Okay, I've got my own stationery. I'm an idiot. Turn to the club room, hasty to find my level pencil case opened. As I swim in my bag, I realize the pen is missing. A quick glance around, I conclude I must have lost it earlier. Returning to the courtyard, I notice Yuri. Oh, custom artwork. She's moving hurriedly. Clutching her bag tightly against her chest and wiping her face with her sleeve. Oh, is she crying? Yuri? She doesn't notice me at first, so I jog up to catch up to her. Yuri, what's wrong? Oh, ha 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 ha, it's, it's no, nothing. Really? Y yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm alright, really. I don't believe her. My eyes may be Yuri for a brief moment before she looks away and I can tell something t ha terrible happened in the few minutes we were separated. What could have brought to this state? Take hold of her shoulder, try and slow her down, so she can face me. She jumps but complies as she comes to halt up the school's entrance. Yuri, whatever's on your mind, you can tell me. I'm your friend after all. It's not m m much, it was just something that m Monica said. Monica? What could she have said? Well, if you don't want me asking, what'd she say? I, I don't re really feel c comfortable talking about it. It. it you're okay with that. And this has already got like complete like normal mods like the first maybe day or like video I should say. It's they're never very really that interest. Maybe the first two they start second when they start to get into this, but this mod just went <coughs> and go straight into this. I like that. I like this already. It's fine, really, I understand. What if you're sh sure about that? You're always welcome to talk to me though. I, I guess it would be nice if you w walked with me. Phone, shut up. M maybe we can c talk on the way. So he isn't here and I've got some time to kill. Besides, I feel like I can't refuse. Not when she's so emotional. Yeah, I don't think you should really refuse that. You should just go with it, man. Yeah, okay. I'm sure that would be nice. Following you, I take the opposite turn from my usual walk home. Soon enough, I find myself in a part of the town where I rarely visit. The walk between us is mostly silent. Yuri occasionally sniffles, wiping her face. What would Monica say to her? Decided to make some light conversation, so about writing might be nice. She does take comfort in talking about subjects she's passionate about, after all. So, so, idiot, how do you like writing poems? She must have read my mind. 
Well, I usually like to listen to music while I write. Even if it's just quiet, playing softly in the background, you know what I mean? R really? Most of the time I just feel like I can write in silence. It leaves me at one with my mind and lets me express my inner thoughts. Though sometimes, I do like listening to a soft piano track. Don't the lyrics alter the way you write? Oh, yeah, but I guess that's not what I'm looking for most of the time, anyway. I like for the mood of the music to affect the way I write, really. And that's just something I'm especially passionate about when I can write in just any condition. That actually sounds like an effective technique. Are we sure to try it out? At this point, Yui seems to have perked her eyes, eyes dried. She perked up her eyes dried. I decided to continue the conversation until I know how much longer it will take to reach her house. I know Sarah likes to hum a little tune to herself while she writes. Ugh. I wonder what Natsuki does. Natsuki. I've been trying to contact her since I saw her in the hospital, but she hasn't responded to any of my messages. She hasn't showed up to the school at all this week either. God, what could have happened? Was it really her father? I don't want to believe it, but the pieces fit together. Her absence. Her inability to contact anyone. What she said about him. But most of all, the bruises. I bite my lip as I am breathing, growing heavier, and my blood reaching a boiling point. If I find out he laid a finger on her, I'll... I'll... So, I'll be honest, I don't disrespect her or anything. You would still wait my train of thought. Nasuki's poems are just a little too simple for my liking. First, they lack a certain edge. I spaced out again. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Nasuki, however, I think we just passed the house then. Wait, what? Wait, which one? Yui looks at me a little surprised by her urgency. God, she points out the house to me. It's that house, if I recall quick. That's a nice house. To be honest, why do you need to know? I only want to worry you about Nasuki. Well, I guess I just wanted to... Right. The rest of the journey is made in silence. I worry about Yui got the wrong impression. But there's not much I can do. Eventually, Yui arrives, signaling her wave goodbye. You know, idiot, you're quite different when no one's around. When it's just the two of us. You fall silent for a moment, lost in thought. Oh god, no. Listen, I'd love to stay and talk, but I, I really would, but I... Uh, oh, it, it's fine, I get it. You have places to be. Her head darts towards the direction of Nazi's house for a moment. Oh, Yuri. It's fine, I've got some writing to do anyway. She turns and starts to walk to her door. No, please don't give a wrong idea, Yuri. I'm not really... It's fine, idiot. I can take a hint. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh no, come on, really, game? <laughs> Already. Before I go into my explanation, she's already entered her house. I feel terrible knowing that Yui probably blames herself for my rejection. But I'll leave quickly regardless. As I turn the corner and approach Natsuki's house, my attention is directed upwards. On the second floor balcony, a large, heavily built man leans against the railing, smoking a cigarette. Is that her dad? Jesus Christ. He's on the phone, I can't help but overhear his conversation. The man mutters him about having business to attend to but promises to be whatever recorder wants within an hour. My stomach sinks. Business. If he means what I think he does. Backtracking you is rude, I think my, I make my way back to school, then I go for my house from there. Put in my keys, I unlock the door. I enter my bedroom and wholly get changed by uniform and something dark clothing. Ooh, what are we doing? Ooh. Ooh, we're outside Nasuki's house. A short jog brings me back to her house. Take a seat within a bus stop to the street opposite her, staking out her father. I ponder if he's already gone. Perhaps if I and I missed him leaving? Maybe he's still dealing with business. A few minutes, however, I'm proving wrong with the sound of an engine revving up and a new expensive looking performance car emerging from the driveway of Natsuki's house. So it's not like he doesn't have money to be able to treat her. He just doesn't choose to. Because look at that house. He speeds away and around the corner within seconds. Once I'm certain it's gone, I move over to Natsuki's house and ring the doorbell. I wait. Nothing. I press down on it again. Once more, no answer. Growing ever anxious, I knock on the door heavily, aggressively, banging my bald fist into the door. A moment of silence. Then, from a second floor window, I see a curtain pull back. A flash of pink, and just as quickly it's replaced once more. That would have been Natsuki. So her dad's out, so it's just Natsuki. So, we're good. I watch it intensely, waiting for any sign of movement, until I hear the sound of a door chain being unhinged and the deadbolt turning. My heart's ready to jump out of my chest. I don't know what I'll be greeted by, but I wait nervously. Idiot, wh what the hell are you t t doing here? It's Natsuki. Thank God. Natsuki, are you alright? What happened to your bruises? 
What what booze is it, do you? I I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She's playing dumb. Even though I saw her. What would have happened to her to be so devoted to keeping it a secret? Before I can reply, she grabs me by the collar of my shirt and yanks me into a foyer. Oh, nice house. H hey, how did you <laughs> know I live? Now's all the time for that. Has she been drinking? Yeah, she she seems drunk. But the question is, where have you been? I I haven't been feeling very good for the past few days. No need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe her after what I saw? Nazi, I know something's wrong. I saw you in the hospital, remember? Oh, th that? She giggles. That was, that was nothing. Don't worry about it, okay? There's much worse to be worried about. <laughs> what do you mean? Come with me. I could do another glass anyway. She grabs my arm loosely and tries to move me along with her through the house. She moves, she begins erratically wobbling as she's having trouble walking. She holds tight onto my arm for support. She stumbles and nearly trips. I catch her, wrapping my arm around her chest and pulling her up right. <laughs> Thanks. That's not like her. Normally if I grabbed her for whatever reason, she'd freak out and call me gross or something of that sort. But here, she didn't even flinch or say anything. But because she's drunk, something feels off. At least my grip from her reluctantly as she's still staggering her way along. Sister moving her now up the stairs, making sure she doesn't fall and knock us both back in under the stairs. Finally make up the stairs and Nazi guides me to her room. Okay, the room is a mess. The floor's littered with small and ripped up pieces of paper. Ripped, ripped, ripped. Picking them one up, I recognise the protagonist of Parfait Girls. Covered his heavily laminated card of stock and it's ripped in two. There's no way Nazi would be able to tear that in half herself. Not only that, but she had no reason to either. But I could feel someone who does. There's a large bottle of red wine capped open line its side under bed. Only a small drip escapes staining her bed sheet crimson. There can't be much left of it. I knew she'd be drinking. I could tell by the moment she opened that goddamn door. Natsuki, you haven't drunk all about yourself, right? She looks flustered. Of course I have, you dummy. Thanks, that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't matter. I haven't even finished anyway. She chews the bottle from the bed. I reach out her hand to take it from her. Natsuki. No, uh, it's mine. She holds the bottle up just over reach and tries to push me away. She's too weak. However, I simply move her on the side. Come on, that's enough. Eh, hey, idiot, please. I need this. So in my room, she said that sent a pang of dread from my body. Before I could reach my armor and second, the remainder of the bottle of contents are gone. Looking at her bedside drawer, I see Nasky's phone. It's overturned, so I only see a case. The case is glittery and pink. This drink is a nice idiot. Natsuki, talk to me. I know something's going on with your dad. Please, I just want to help. But I can't if you won't let me tell if you won't tell me what's going on. This is all the help I need. She claps under the bed and giggles. I haven't felt this happy in so long. I grow any more uneasy hearing that. Is this the length she has to go in order to escape her demon? Just how bad is the demon trying to escape from? As Nancy begins to snore, a grip of wine bottle falters and it rolls off the bed under the floor. To her side, it doesn't shatter. Said it rolls under the bed. Shaking my head, I bend down to pick up a bottle that rolled under the bed. Reach my hand underneath, I can feel the wine bottle and something else. What the? Do you know what, guys? We're gonna save it there. So it's a cliffhanger. So you wanna watch? If you wanna see what happens next? You're gonna have to watch tomorrow's video of it. So guys, this is really good actually. This mod's really interesting. Bloody hell! It get we got it gets straight into it. This seems gonna be this seems like I feel like it's gonna be really good. I feel like it's gonna sort of be like a brand new day where we're gonna take Natsuki back to I ha our house like in a brand new day I think that's what's gonna be gonna like take her in we're gonna protect her we're gonna feed her we go we go do everything okay so if you liked this video smash that like button where it hurts also smash the subscribe button too if you're new here and turn on that notification bell to get notified when I upload and I'll see all you amazing people in the next video bye bye